Hey, what rug 85 here. Uh, we're going to try to do a maybe two or three part series on the the disassembly and assembly cleaning and hopefully in the end shooting the Winchester 1892. Uh, this is an original Winchester 1892. Uh, manufacturer date for this particular firearm was 1904. Uh, it I got it at an auction uh, quite a, not quite a, uh, five eight years ago or so, uh, it was reasonably priced. Uh, I think, as a matter of fact, I was just about to to uh, give my last bid, and it happened to be the uh, the winning bid. So, uh, to tell you the truth, I can't remember how much I paid for it. Uh, I looked it up, and uh, I had my uh, had my son Syntex seventy seven look it up for me as far as the price goes. And this, which which as you, if you'll see some of the close ups. This would be probably a poor uh, version of one. I wouldn't. Uh, it's, it's got some gouges in the stock. There's some rust on here. Uh, some some little bit of rust on the barrel. The one thing about this, it actually has a little bit of the bluing left. Uh, I do have another one, uh, a uh, 1892 manufactured in 1892. Uh, you might saw a quick uh, glimpse of it in my Rossi video. Uh, just comparing the, the new Rossi to the uh, the old 1892s, uh, but this does have a little bit of bluing left with it, to it. So I'm gonna we're gonna try to do a complete disassembly of this, uh, break it down. I might do something to the stock. I might just use some denatured alcohol on the stock just to bring it back a little bit. I'm not gonna refinish it. I'm not gonna sand it because uh, that's when you do lose uh, the complete value of it. So we're gonna just try to do some things to actually get this working again. Uh, when I did get it at the auction, and again, I didn't pay really that much for it. Uh, it is non-working. Uh, the the lever loop right here uh, will not come out. I, I cannot move it. It's stuck in there for some reason. Uh, hammer and trigger do work, uh, but, but this will not come out. Uh, really just left it in my gun case for, gosh, since I got it and uh, kind of really didn't do anything with it and just got the just the idea to, to try to do something with to break this down and and to try to disassemble it see what's going on in here actually in here why why that lever handle won't uh, operate and uh, get it back into working condition so so we could take it up to camp and take some shots with it uh, this particular model uh, is a 3840 as far as the caliber goes. Uh, they did make them in 3220s for the 4440s, 2520s, 18Bs, which was late in the production. Uh, these were produced again from 1892 to uh, 1938. There was about a million of these made, uh, just a little bit over a million of them. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, starting to break this down. Uh, I have some punches over here some screwdrivers uh, and I actually did send away for some new screws on here somebody looks like uh, they had taken this apart in the past uh, sort of buggered up the screws a little bit put the gouges in the screws uh, that wasn't me doing that I, I really have never done anything to this so I'm gonna see what we can do to uh, restore this get it going so I'm gonna take you through the, the steps I've never done this before I am not a gunsmith but I am not going to really do anything to change what's there besides breaking it down, cleaning it, seeing if there's any parts broken or need replacing, and then go ahead and get it back together again. And like I said, hopefully get it up and fired. I ordered a, a box of the uh, 3840 bullets, and uh, they should be coming probably in a few weeks. So uh, hopefully you'll see us up at camp and actually hit some steel with this. That's uh, best case scenario. Worst case scenario, uh, it just might be an, a non-firing version. Uh, still has some value since it is an original Winchester. Um, not a lot of value, but uh, that, that's okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start on this. Uh, 1892 really was when the smokeless powder started to come in. Uh, they needed a little bit stronger design from the 1873 rifle that has the uh, toggle design in it. Uh, so they created this action, or John Browning actually created this action. And um, it had a lot stronger. 
I don't know if I can put a, a picture here of a uh, of a 1892 next to a uh, 1873. You can see this is a very uh, a very compact, very short compared to that 1873. Uh, a lot of strength in it. You'll see the uh, the locking bolts in here, uh, so they're um, uh, give this action a lot of strength. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start on this by uh, removing the stock and taking the tang screw out. So let's go ahead and do that. Probably switch back and forth between the cameras a little bit to show you some close-up on what I'm working on. Uh, but uh, as now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this. Pull this out. And again, we'll take a look at it. And again, uh, condition, eh, a little bit on the beat-up side. Uh, like somebody might even use this as a boat oar or something. Maybe did a little of this with it. Uh, in case you're wondering this action, um, wondering if, if there happens to be a, a live shell in there. Uh, well, I did get it at auction. It was being basically handed around, passed around. Uh, and since the trigger works, I know somebody did the trigger. But uh, I, I did shine the flashlight down through the barrel. And you can see... Uh, the firing pin in there and the ejector. So I know there's not a shell in here so we don't have to worry about this for some reason ha actually having a, a live shell in it from from way back when and really don't know why the action has seized up uh, and again it really never worked from when I got it so hopefully we're gonna find out uh, really what what really did that and um, let's see what's going on here so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, take this bottom tang screw out right here. And it's a long screw that goes all the way through. So we're, I have a few little uh, plastic containers. I'm going to put these uh, pieces in so one I don't lose them and uh, two so the cat doesn't come by and knock them off the table and lose them. So uh, not sure what's going to happen but let's see if we can slide this stock uh, off of here. And there we go. Uh, took a little bit of force but not uh, as much as I actually thought it was going to be. So here's our original stock. Uh, it is off. Eh, looks like a little bit of cleanup to do on this, but as you can see, there there are some marks in it and some uh, some dings. So, uh, but I'm going to see what I can do to get this thing a little bit on the, on cleaned up a little bit. So, we'll put that to the side since our stock's off. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to remove this finger lever right now. Now, what's going to happen with this again? Since this is uh, this is what won't operate. And what's jammed in there, I don't really know, to tell you the truth. It almost looks like somebody was taking a hammer and, and knocking on the on these uh, pieces right here. So, uh, not really sure the, uh, what these locking, you know, why they would bang on these locking blocks. And I'm sure that's what they thought what was holding this up. This is really what gives this uh, firearm its strength uh, in the action itself, are these locking blocks in there. So I'm not sure whether it's rust holding them in there or there's something broken. So we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and see if we can get this uh, this uh, finger lever off right here. So uh, first thing we're going to do is on the, the left hand side is going to remove our screw. I'll go ahead and turn it around. And let me get this and show you over here. Hopefully this is coming through on the video. Uh, this screw right here. We're going to go ahead and start with this this screw right here. Top on the left hand side. Uh, this, this is the uh, screw plug that actually holds a pin in. And we're going to go ahead and see if we can get that out right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to use this one. And here it comes as I take that out. I can see some rust coming with it, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out. This little screw right here. I'll try to get some close-ups on these screws, and it holds a pin in here. I'm going to see if I can move this around, do a close-up. 
Hopefully we're focused in there. But inside that hole there is a pin that has to be knocked out. So I'll get her way in there. And on the other side, on the right hand side, there's a corresponding hole right at the top. We'll put a punch through there and see if we can get the uh, that pin to come out. So let's take our first nut and drop it in our container. So again, through the uh, right hand side, the small hole. I'm actually going to use an Allen wrench because like, my punch wasn't small enough and that seems to work fine. Let me turn this around. As you can see, I started it just a little bit right here. That is where our uh, punch out that pivot pin. So let's go ahead and do that. And there it comes. So here is our pivot pin. Uh, maybe putting some of that brake free on there. I may have done something. Put it back here where you can see it. And again, I, I will get some close-ups and name some of these parts on here. But here's our pivot pin. Put that away. Be cleaning those up a little bit. And again, that came right through our hole. So, uh, let's see if that loosened anything up on here. Really doesn't seem like anything yet, so that didn't do anything as far as getting this out. And again, hopefully when I get all these screws out of here, uh, this will come off. Okay, we had uh, gotten the pivot pin out, pushed it through, as I showed you, and then we were going to uh, go ahead and uh, remove the... Uh, bolt that goes through this tang and holds the actually the, the lever assembly and the hammer. Uh, this, this is that big screw right here. That farther screw right on the end here. Uh, for those of you that are observant, uh, yes my shirt color did change and the day changed uh, because I went to Try to start to loosen this up yesterday uh, and off camera, of course, and just to make sure I could get it loose. And I had no luck in removing this screw whatsoever. Uh, I tried a lot of things, uh, went out and got, got the uh, liquid wrench, uh, put that on there, let it sit, didn't do anything. I actually let it sit overnight for about 16 hours, tried it again and I just could not break this uh, screw free. I uh, tried a lot uh, with different screwdrivers, different techniques. Uh, had the, uh, get the right, my screwdriver I was using. There it is. <coughs> tried the technique actually with the wrench itself to bring it there, hold it very still, and use this as as a lever to turn that and I just could not break that free and uh, to tell you the truth I was just afraid that I was going to break this uh, screw all together now I shouldn't because it, it, there's a lot of threads right there so I don't think it should have broken but it just would not come free and this one goes all the way through out to the other side and you can see actually see the back of the bolt is this little uh, circle right here is the back so uh, I just could not break that free. Uh, I had the liquid wrench sitting on here, uh, on this side, and uh, basically a lot of liquid wrench sitting all over it. Uh, so one good thing we did find uh, while that liquid wrench was sitting there, now let me get this in. As you can see, uh, we can now actually go ahead and uh, work the hammer. So uh, I saw a lot of rust come out there. Uh, with the uh, liquid wrench. I'm not sure if it's going to pick up on here. I think you may be able to see. As you can see that liquid wrench in there, uh, a lot of rust came out. So it's actually doing some good. I'm going to hopefully get all this rust out of here and replace that of course with some nice gun oil, whether it's brake free or rem oil or, or one of those uh, good oils. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and do that. Now there's, I just, the only other thing I could do, maybe send it to a gunsmith uh, to see if I could have them take it out or drill that out myself. Uh, as long as I can get this action working on a regular basis, um, 
at least 50% satisfied. I would have liked to get this all the way broken down so I could get that completely clean on the inside. I'm just going to have to do the best I can. I'm not going to be able to replace the parts, the locking levers. I was thinking about replacing them just to make it a little bit nicer. Uh, but since uh, I don't know where this has been before I received it, I uh, have no idea. So it was somebody's project to work on because I could see about this. As I said before, just about every screw has some has some marks in them, so uh, I'll still replace the ones that I can with the kit that I get, and uh, just move on from there. Uh, just one thing, if you can see up close, and I will show you this uh, spring right here. That's uh, the trigger, or for, excuse me, for the hammer, and hopefully, as you can see, as I lock that down, there's the load on that spring, and that's what. Uh, uh, goes ahead when we pull the trigger lets the hammer drop so uh, everything still seems to be working and again try to get as much rust out of there as I can uh, so what I thought I'd do is go ahead and, and clean this inside and I'm gonna take uh, all the wood off and go ahead and use some denatured alcohol on that wood I go ahead and use some denatured alcohol to go ahead and clean this wood up. Now this should not strip the finish off. Basically we're going to use it to get some dirt off. Uh, it may lighten it up a little bit, uh, but really it's really just to remove some dirt. It's to soften that lacquer up just a little bit, maybe re-spread it. Uh, there are a lot of dings in here. It still have a lot of black marks, which which eh, 1904, and again we don't know who knows what happened to it. Somebody hand it down to hand it down to hand it down and uh, from what I can see maybe kids had it at one time I'm not really sure but uh, I'm gonna take that I'm gonna take this see if I can get this off and go ahead and use the denatured alcohol I'll move upstairs out to the porch and use that there see so I can clean this up and then we'll go ahead and clean the rest of this uh, right now uh, what I'll go ahead and do then is I can uh, clean out the, the magazine itself, uh, this tube, this magazine tube. I'll go ahead and uh, take the spring out. Uh, right here on the end, uh, there's a screw. Uh, the screw goes all the way through and actually goes into the barrel just a teeny bit. So we can take this screw out and get that loosened. And for the new ones, you do want to have a little pressure right here because there is a spring loaded. So you don't want your cap to go flying. Now this one, uh, since there was a little bit of banging around under this end of this too, uh, it's a little sticky, but uh, as we can see, our pin, our end cap, and uh, out comes our spring. There we go. A snake. Out comes our spring, and, and here's our cap and pin. And then right here, uh, this is where the the shells would go on. So that would inside that would be right on the end of the uh, spring, just like this. So I'm going to take the opportunity to clean, go ahead and clean the spring, uh, clean the cap and the screw, and then go ahead and. Uh, clean this out right in here. I uh, look down it and uh, there may be a little bit of rust in there. Let's take a look. There's rust and grime. But the uh, 410 uh, shotgun brush works perfectly right down this tube. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Clean this out. Of course clean the barrel. Get some lead uh, cleaner in. Get all that out of there and uh, go ahead and clean the action uh, as good as I can. I'm going to leave the plate on while I do it and uh, let's start to get it. Maybe I'll put two of these rags together. Yeah, this feels pretty good. Start soaking our, our rag with some of the alcohol. And then uh, this is the bottom of it. If I start down here on the bottom Kind of work on uh, cleaning this off. This is going to basically, it's going to do a couple things. One is going to clean the dirt off. As you can see, there's our dirt, but it's also uh, 
it's going to uh, sort of float the surface a little bit. Some of the, uh, the wax or the, the varnish that's on there now, it's going to float some of that off. So we'll uh, keep working on this, change our rag, put some more on there, keep working on that. In this uh, yogurt container here I have uh, feed and wax and now I'm going to put that on once I'm done to uh, feed the wood again and give it a, a nice look. So let's, uh, and again, maybe keep going up the side here. And, uh, who knows what we'll find on that. Of course I'm going with the grain of the wood. You can use this denatured alcohol on your antiques. So uh, if you wanted to, so who knows what we'll find. Some of these initials, I think I would have saw that already, but uh, you never know. So keep going. Got some notches here on the top, whatever. These, I don't know if you can see them or not, but uh, whatever those notches were for, some people don't, don't know. And again, who had this? I have no idea. I got, got absolutely no background on it whatsoever. Uh, don't know who owned it, where it came from, who originally purchased it, who originally purchased it. So really don't have any idea. So you can see it's looking a little bit better, uh, a little on the dull side. So that's what we're hoping that uh, that feed and wax is going to bring it back a little bit when we put that feed and wax on. So let's go ahead and. Continue with our denatured alcohol rub. And again, you really rub this until you get it uh, to how it, you like it. Try to go along the edge here. Put the grain as much as I can, but to get into some of these notches and spots, it can go that way, but then go across again. So, uh, as you can see, compared to uh, the foregrip itself, I'm not sure if you can tell, but the color is starting to definitely lighten a little bit. You get to see the uh, grain on it a little bit more. A little bit of that patina is coming off. Let's work up here a little bit more. Work on the end of it. it over and start to work underneath. And uh, here is our left side, as you can see, and here is our right. So at least uh, I can tell the difference. Hopefully the light will allow you to see the difference also. But uh, there's certainly a difference. Again, you can start to see the wood grain in there. Hopefully when I put the feed and wax on there, it's really going to make it go all the way. So I'll stop now for a second, continue this, and I'll be back when I have uh, the stock done and we'll start to work on the foregrip a little bit. Uh, very, very pleased the way this looks right now. And again, it's a dull finish, but we're going to get that feed and wax on there. So I am going to go ahead and uh, start on the foregrip. Again, I'm just going to leave this on. Uh, to do that it shouldn't take me very long. So uh, let's go ahead and start working on that foregrip and see if we can get this cleaned up a little bit. Maybe we'll get that looking almost as good as the uh, stock. The table's a little noisy. Again, as you can see, uh, dirt is coming off, and maybe even a little bit of the lacquer or stain is starting to loosen a little bit on it. And again, denatured alcohol is what you would use to clean your brushes. 
uh, if you're doing some painting so uh, it does melt the paint away a little bit helps clean the uh, your brushes so it's actually melting some of this uh, finish off of there but not all of it it's it's a good alternative to having it completely refinished so it is in a it's in its uh, original condition it's as have you refinished this no so you can honestly say that so the stock has not been refinished of course you would lose some value if it did now, now with this one and again not much value on it just because there's it's in some some con bad condition but uh, uh, certainly like, we're going to do anything we can to it make it look a little bit better uh, and get it back out to that it's actually functioning and firing again just because it's from 1904 really doesn't mean it shouldn't be still working and being used I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos with uh, antique weapons that are certainly older than this that are firing flawlessly and still uh, function correctly so uh, we'll go ahead and do this. So I'll, I'll keep working on the foregrip. We can see it's already starting to lighten up. I can start to see the grain. Going to work on it a little bit more. Not sure if I'm going to be able to get it that light or not. And then we'll come back and do our feed and wax. I just finished with the uh, foregrip. Uh, didn't come out quite as nice as this, but uh, that's to be really expected. Uh, this is the part that you're handling the most. Uh, your hands are oily, and you're really you're going to pick up that oil on t on here, and uh, it's going to make it just a little bit darker. So uh, it did certainly take a lot of that off, and again, I think it looks a lot better like that, uh, at least more antiqueish than all patinaed up and dark and dirty. And again, there's both sides of our stock. Again, this this side is a little bit more uh, it's a little bit more rough to the but uh, this side came out uh, looking real good except for a few of these notches again on the bottom whatever the heck they were from maybe they used it as a deer rifle and every time he got one he put a notch in it who knows but uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, use our feed and wax now so again uh, this came out pretty nice took a lot of that off and as you can see our dirty dirty rags from uh, from using our oil over or our denatured alcohol on this getting all that dirt and lifting them just a little bit of that finish uh, you can start to see the wood grain in there again which is great and again let's get a little bit more here that would stop rattling for me there we go uh, and again not much really much coming off at this point so this is the point where I'm going to stop we'll uh, as far as the de denatured alcohol goes and we'll get our feed and wax we'll open this up as you can see uh, really just feed and wax very nice pleasant orangey smell uh, so we're going to go ahead and put this on let it soak for a little bit and then try to buff it back out again so uh, let's get some of this feed and wax in here and I'm sure this will get this get this nice shine going on it as we can see already uh, really starting to look uh, look like something again that's for sure bringing the grain out a little bit uh, again this is the nice side of it so here we are with that feed and wax get this wood that's probably hasn't had any anything done to this wood on this for who knows how long so uh, I'm sure I can't use too much of this. So I'm going to really put it in, see, let us see if we can soak into that wood. Uh, and then I'll wait a few minutes, come back and buff that off. And uh, hopefully we'll have a nice shine on it again. Turn that around. Start to do this side. Parts of that. So I'm just going to let it sit there for a minute. Great. 
and we can go ahead and start on the foregrip and hopefully that will look just as good. A little bit of our feed and wax and start on this. Parts covered. The screwdriver here, I'll just leave it up so it's not touching the towel, soaking in. So I'll just leave these go for a few minutes and come back and buff them off. Now it's still soaking in. I brought out the uh, the bottle so you could take a look. Uh, this is Howard's Feed and Wax Wood Preserve Beeswax and Orange Oil is really what it's made out of. Uh, on the back are instructions, saturate a cloth, wipe it on, let stand 20 minutes, wipe off, and polish out with a clean cloth. And so that's what I'll be doing. Again, Howard's uh, Feed and Wax. So that's what is soaking in right now for the 20 minutes. So there's our stock all cleaned up. I certainly think it looks better than it did when we started. Again, the foregrip, and kind of going into the shadow there, it gets a little bit darker. But, uh, as you can see, it certainly lightened it up a little bit. So, uh, go ahead and take this back inside, and finish cleaning it up. Well, back downstairs again. And again, I'm not sure whether the stock is showing up a little bit better in this light down here than it was out, in the, out on the porch. Uh, so, and again, here's our stock. And uh, the rest of it. Uh, so we'll next thing I'm gonna do as much as I can uh, to clean out anything, any of the rust that I can uh, within the action. I'm really just gonna do the best I can. I really wanted to take it apart, but uh, that screw is preventing me. So there's nothing that I can really do uh, except do the best cleaning job on this that I can. Uh, and again, uh, the magazine tube. So let me take the end off around here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get my brush. I'm going to go ahead and brush this through. Get a, there's a lot of dirt in there. Uh, I don't like pushing more dirt into the action. I go, don't like, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get everything out so I could go this way with it, but uh, you really, at this point, I have to do what I have to do. So uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning it and uh, I guess I'll come back when I uh, start to put everything back together again because I don't think you need to watch me uh, certainly cleaning this. Uh, if you have some firearms you certainly know how to do that. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and start. Probably put a little bit of uh, lead dissolver down the barrel as I'm starting on the magazine. And then again start working on that action. Uh, keeping it careful not to get crud from the barrel in there and uh, go ahead and cleaning that out of all that uh, basically the the liquid wrench that I had in there. I want to get some good oil back inside of it uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, this is the third day. I spent about another hour or so scrubbing out the action and the barrel. Uh, cleaned out the magazine tube a couple days ago. Got a lot of a rust and gunk out of there. Uh, so we're about, about ready to put it back together again as much as it uh, can go back together again. Uh, one more time, would have loved to take that apart and really got in there and got everything out that I could, but uh, since I can, I'm going to do what we can do. And uh, I, got, I got in there and, and cleaned as much of the gunk out as I could. It is working smooth now, so I'm hoping for the best. So let's uh, let's get this uh, magazine tube back together again. Uh, and here is our spring. This is our spring for the magazine tube, and you see all that oil and stuff all over my table here from from me uh, cleaning out uh, the inside, dripping the oil all over the place. I just have this uh, nice green cloth on here to soak all that up. But uh, let's go ahead and and uh, 
get our spring and on one end of it uh, goes the cap. I'll just put that spring right in there. And let's get this down the magazine tube. And here we it's just sticking out a little bit on the end here. And the magazine cap, there is uh, one large end, one small end. A uh, large end is where we screw through. So we're going to push that spring in and get that lined up. I'll get my glasses on here. Get that lined up, get our screw in. Start it just about all the way. shouldn't be going anywhere now. So one more thing to do is to get the stock on. So let's put that on. And get our screw in there. tight but not over tight so uh, we're back together again uh, zoom out from, set her up I'll zoom out for a sec or actually maybe do some some close-ups here get some of this out of the way So here you have it, the uh, again the stock, uh, basically used the uh, denatured alcohol on that and floated the surface a little bit and then put the uh, beeswax and orange oil back on again and we have our functioning action once again and our foregrip and then of course down the barrel. So here is our finished product, the Winchester 1892. This one manufactured in 1904, uh, caliber 38 Winchester Centerfire or 3840. We'll have some shells coming in this week from Midway USA, and hopefully we'll get up the cabin uh, just a few short weeks and see if this fires. It's still a mystery whether it does or not. I'm not sure. It appears that everything is okay, but of course until you put those first shell in there and fire it, we'll, we'll not know. So, uh, the, how long going to do that? Not sure. I may put a string on the trigger and get back a little bit, put it on some sandbags. I think for the first one, that is what I may do, just because I don't know uh, about it. But, uh, and again, here it is. And again, that action working very smooth, very, very good. Good sight picture, so hopefully we'll be back in action. Now this is White Rook 85 signing out from the old basement, again with the Winchester Model 1892.